Hello everyone, and welcome once again to The Heir's Lair. I'm your host, Jonathan Taylor. Today, as the more eagle-eyed among you might have noticed, I am not, uh, I am not alone. I have a special guest with me, and uh, special guest, I must ask you, please introduce yourself. Hi, uh, my name's Matthew, Matthew Anzaloni. I, I write short stories on Amazon as well as having my own YouTube channel when I cover, like, award shows and movies and TV shows and a bunch of other fun stuff. Okay. I, uh, I couldn't help but uh, browse your, uh, <laughs> uh, browse your uh, Twitter profile for a while, and it says you run DWTS Showdown and I, you started HDPA Awards. So uh, mind, uh, mind explaining what those are? Yes, um, DWTS Showdown. First off, DWTS stands for Dance with the Stars. I run my own fantasy game. People get to play as celebrities, pick their dances. Just a fun way to like interact with people and just have fun. That's how I met my girlfriend. Actually, I met her through the game I was running. Okay, is there is there any kind of a, a competition or, or how does how does the scoring work uh, with the game or do you, or do you just do the or do you? Or is it? Uh, does it occur more? Does it occur more or less uh, randomly, and it's a game of chance, or or is there some actual like? Uh, there's some actual judging. Involved? Yeah, there's some actual judging, and we judge it like based on. They give us a dance style and a song, and us as judges, because there's actually three of us, we judge it like how well the dance style works with the song. Does it match? Does it not match? Uh-huh. Like. Like a slow dance, you obviously wouldn't pick a super fast song to go with it, and vice versa. Yeah, I get your point. Yeah. And uh, what is, or what are the HDPA awards? Um, it is an award show I started um, based on the Golden Globes. Um, H- HTPA stands for Hollywood Twitter Press Association. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it started out as something I did with five people because I was pissed off one year about the Golden Globe nominations, and sure enough, it grew to like over forty members now, and we have like international people joining us, some big time YouTubers joining us. It's, somehow it turned into a big deal. I'm not sure how still. <laughs> well, all I can say is that sounds that sounds really freaking awesome. I have Thank to you. Say, I have to say I've been a bit uh, disappointed by the Golden Globes uh, themselves, myself recently, uh, in the latter half of the uh, last decade, when the objectively worst parts of Game of Thrones won the most awards. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's so that's kind of why like why we did it. Um, we started this upcoming year will be our third year, and we started after the Golden Globes nominated music. A movie directed by Sia, which is yeah, I know I know the controversy surrounding it, so yeah. so yeah. that's why I started the award show to just get that bad taste out of people's mouths. Okay, well, and the rest is history. Even we've already alluded to some uh, pretty controversial topics. My next question is: Is there anything you do not uh, want to mention over the course of this interview? Um. Not really. I'm kind of open. Obviously, like religion and politics, I would love to avoid. <laughs> that's just something I don't talk about at all. But other than that, I'm kind of open for anything. <laughs> okay, we'll keep this. Uh, we'll keep this nice and polite. Or as, or <laughs> as, ni- or as nice and polite as we can uh, as as we can uh, hold down. Uh, you said you you said that this is your first uh, writing interview, but. You said you were interviewed for uh, other things before. Are is this are the showdown and the, the awards in any way connected to that, or is or was that for something else? Um, I had like job interviews before, but this is like my don't, first. Those like... don't count. Those don't count. Okay, in that case, I never had an interview before. Okay. This you're the first one who took interest in interviewing me. Well, uh, let let me let me say it like this: those were interviews for assessments. These are interviews for uh, getting to know people. Yeah, I, I never had an interview like this before. Okay. Uh, next up, you mentioned that you uh, write uh, short stories. Do you have... Yes. Oh, look, a pigeon. Uh, anyway, <laughs> ADHD aside. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> ADHD aside, um, do you write any other form of uh, any other form of fiction? Maybe something more long form. Maybe, maybe screenplays, maybe novellas, or something like that? 
I'm actually thinking about writing a screenplay, but so far I've been just sticking with short stories for now. Okay. Kind of like building it up as I go, but a screenplay is definitely on my list. That's for sure. And do you want to write what? What kind of a screenplay? What kind of screenplay are you looking for? A short film, a, a TV pilot, for a full-length movie. Excuse me. Um, for the story, I'm for the story I'm thinking of doing. I think it would benefit from a TV pilot, so that's what I'm going to try to work on. Okay. Uh, who would you? Uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna divert the I'm gonna divert the interview a bit on uh, on that topic if that's uh, all right with you. Yeah, that's okay. Um, what exactly is this? Uh, uh, what exactly do you want this uh, script to be about? Whew, um. I I wrote a short story back, once say about five years ago. Um, it was about this woman who goes through so many dark things in her life. One day she wakes up as someone else, takes that person's life over, rather than dealing with the pain that's been inside her. So that's kind of like what I wanted to develop more of. Okay. Uh, assuming it assuming it uh, gets picked up because. It does. It does actually sound. Uh, does actually sound interesting, and it has some promise. Like I could mention at least one soap opera that has that. Uh, that has that premise. <laughs> uh, though I don't know how it ended, but it doesn't matter now. Uh, assuming it gets picked up. Uh, which network do you want? Would you most want to to pick it up? Ooh, that's a tough one. I would say uh, either HBO or a streaming service, because I think like Apple or or HBO would be able. To take the show in the right direction it needs to be okay um what what prompted you to create uh short stories or what what where do you where does inspiration uh, come to you inspiration just kind of comes to me unexpectedly um i started writing short stories about three years ago my stepdad got very sick he had six strokes and three heart attacks. Whoa. So I've been taking care. So I've been taking care of him for the past couple of years, and the short stories was a way to just escape and just pour my heart into something that I enjoyed, and I just kept going with it. And the rest is history. Uh, I hope your father is your father better now, or yeah, he's doing. My stepdad is doing much better. My oh, stepdad, yeah. Uh... Okay, next question. Uh, how do you, how does um, how does the creative process uh, typically work? Like, I are you are you a character first kind of writer? Are you a world first uh, kind of writer? Do are they a package deal, or do you or do you start with uh, or, or or do you or do you start more more with uh, you know creative prompts? Hmm, I I would say it probably would. It usually starts with the character, and I build from there. I notice I keep writing in the female perspective. I don't try to, <laughs> like going into my stories. I don't try to, but I just kind of end up just keep writing in the female perspective. So it usually starts with a character, and then I build the world from there and the story plot. Well, my my world also, or my uh, my novel series also has a uh, also has plenty of uh, uh, female main characters or. Uh... Yeah. Or, or you know, female characters in uh, major roles. So, I so I kind of so I kind of get the I kind of get the appeal. I, I I get the desire to see more you know the desire to see more strong women kicking ass because exactly know, that's that's something we want to see. Yeah. Uh, okay. Do uh, are there any has there ever been a uh, has there ever been a short story that you were that you wanted to. Uh, and that you that you wanted to delete, or that you thought uh, never really worked. Um, there was actually one. There's actually one short story that comes to mind. It was supposed to be a body swapping Valentine's Day version of a Christmas Carol, <laughs> and I just left it alone for like over a year. I still haven't touched it to this day. Okay, is there a particular reason you uh, didn't leave it? You didn't, uh, you know, finish it. I was about two chapters in, and I just wasn't feeling it. Like, like I just after two chapters, I was just like, Ugh. so 
So, um, so I went to the story um, current that I'm going to release very soon, actually. But I kind of jumped to that one rather than continuing. Okay. Given your stories are long enough to be divided into uh, into chapters, do any of them have what I have what I could call uh, deleted scenes or things that you would have uh, wanted to include but uh, de but uh, decided against for whatever reason? One one of the things I've learned from one of my English teachers is less is more. Always trust yourself to to not overdo and not over explain. Like I remember in high school, I would want to explain every single detail about every single thing in the story. I'm pretty sure one of my essays had a, a two paragraphs I talked about a flower, just a flower, nothing else. And ever since then, I'm just like. No, I'm just going to keep it short. So when it comes to deleted scenes, I try to work them into the story somehow. Or if I can work them in my next story, that's where I put them in. So you, so you also tend to recycle scenes. Does that, uh, does that happen a lot? Not really. I don't, try re I don't recycle scenes that much. And if I do, I try to completely rewrite them, if that makes sense. Okay. Like all my stories have a body swapping theme, but it's never the ex but it's never the same way it's caused by. Like one's a wish, and then another one's a curse, and then I try make it seem so different from each other that they're just not the same story happening over for, and over again. For some reason, I'm starting to get Chuck Tingle vibes. <laughs> <laughs> except I don't think you're except I don't think you're a parody writer or. Uh, or a comedy. <laughs> Though I do imagine you, some of your stories at least touch upon some comedic elements. Oh, I've thrown tons of comedy. Um, the story I'm going to release has probably more comedy than I usually put in, <laughs> which I'm very excited about. It's definitely more... A... It's not the best way to put it. It's a little more adult than I normally would do. Okay. It's not like super adulty, but if that makes sense. Yeah. So your so your typical style is young adult, and this is more new adult. If I can, if I yeah, can, yeah. okay. Borrowing some, uh, I'm borrowing some novel terminology, terminology there. Okay. Next question, the exact opposite of the last one. Are there, are there any scenes or elements that you uh, initially opposed including in a story before you decided, oh wait, this actually fits here. Actually, yeah. Um... One of my one of the chapters I wrote about, um, I mentioned the word sex in it for the first time ever, and I was originally super against just using that word sex in it. But I decided, you know what, the story, I need to keep that word, and it really changes the whole vibe of the chapter. So I kept that word in. You know that. And this uh, now reminds me of, of another thing. You keep reminding me of things, <laughs> so I keep going on <laughs> tangents, which may or may not be good. I'll, uh, I'll wait to see how many people view this. Uh, it reminds me of that episode of uh, Seinfeld. Am I showing my age by referencing Seinfeld here? No, it's fine. It's totally fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's, a, there's an episode of Seinfeld where they, <laughs> where they each take a bet about how long they can go without masturbating, but they never <laughs> use the word masturbation in the episode. <laughs> <laughs> and pretty much every, and pretty much most people I know of agree that that is either one of the best if not the best episode of Seinfeld. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> but yeah, it's so true. It's like you don't want to use a word like that, but it really impacts the story. Um it's a risk, but you know I I, I took the risk. Yeah. Oh, what what word were you going to use instead? I was just not going to use the word at all. I was going to just change the... And just be like, after that, I had fun and then laid down. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, when, it comes to, when, it, when it comes to writing, I think everyone has their, uh, has their, fi has their favorite things they, uh, they want to write you know, or in, and their least favorite things they, wanna they, want, to, uh, they want to write. So what is it? So what is it about you that makes you that makes you uh, excited or scared when it comes to uh, writing a particular element? 
Whew, that's a tough one. I think for me, from for me, I like realistic fiction with a hint of fantasy. That's probably the best way I could describe my writing. But I've noticed that I keep writing in a body swapping element. <laughs> I don't know why that just sort of became my signature, I guess. And I kind of like, you know what? I kind of own up to it. Like, this is just my writing style now. I like doing things like that. I like changing people's perspective, both literally and physically. Okay. And it's just kind of something I just kept working with. Like, I'm thinking about maybe putting it in a horror sense soon. Maybe maybe also putting it in maybe a sci-fi sense. That's stuff I haven't done yet. There is a... There is but a, yeah, I'm... Go ahead. Oh, you, no, you go. No, you go. Okay. There is another way you could uh, take the story. You remember at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that uh, there was a uh, soap opera that did your... That, yeah. That did your, uh, 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 you know, pilot, pilot concept. That uh, that soap opera uh, had more had didn't really have body swap. It had more had more of a mistaken identity uh, thing going. So maybe that would so maybe that's something you could try to uh, work in to kind of wean yourself off of body swap. Should you feel so inclined? <laughs> I might actually. I don't know here, yeah, but I'm kind of just. I think I took a year off writing because I was just struggling. I felt so weird. I felt while I was writing was so different so out there that i'm just like no one's gonna read this why bother but uh, the past like few months or so i kind of realized you know what this is just my writing and i'm just gonna put it out there and see what ha happens okay that's uh <laughs> that's cool uh now i realize i kind of have to rephrase my uh my previous question i'm oh, sorry about that. <laughs> no no it's fine it's fine that was uh that was my mistake so what is, what is it that you uh, particularly like to write? And what is it that you particularly uh, dread to write? Ooh. I've, I've noticed I love endings of stories and the beginnings. Okay. It's the middles that give me the most headache. Because I'm like, I don't want to overdo a detail. But at the same time, I know my book actually... Even for a short story, you still need details in it. You can't just be like nah i'm just gonna write the beginning and the end of the story and then that's it yeah it's called sagging middle syndrome people yep. people who write longer form fiction are confronted with that thing as well so yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay next up i think you mentioned that you publish all of your i no, i don't think you mentioned you actually did mention that you uh, publish all of your short stories on amazon are correct you did you ever think about publishing them in a different format before settling uh, on Amazon? Um, I thought about it a lot. I'm a self-publisher, first off. I should probably mention that. Yeah. Because I know how some people feel about self-publishers, but that's another conversation for another time. This is a judgment then... area. I'm I'm self-published as well, so and I and okay. I mostly read and I mostly read self-published these days, so it's so yeah. it's perfectly fine. Yeah. I chose Amazon just because it fits well with what I do. Like, I've noticed with short stories on Amazon, I don't have to change the format that much. I don't have to, like, fix the fauna of it, if you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I'm just able to write it as is and then publish it easily. This reminds me of something that, uh, again, you're putting me on tangents. This reminds me of something uh, Dominic Smith, a.k.a. the Dom, on uh, YouTube, <laughs> um, uh, once said, he said that uh, these that these stories are basically like uh, YouTube videos, but in written form. Honestly, yeah, I think that's a fair thing to say. Okay. Uh, by the way, if you're interested in a, uh, you know, if you're interested in uh, uh, in this guy, he he does he does reviews where he compares books to movie adaptations. So, maybe. oh, that's real cool. I'll definitely check it out. Okay, it's called the Dom. Or I think, or I think that was his. Uh, I think that was his uh, in his initial uh, online name. I think he goes, you know, goes more by his uh, actual name, Dominic Smith. Check him out. If you I'll, I'll find him either way. Okay. Uh, did you ever think about, or, or would you consider publishing your short stories in an, something akin to an anthology or an omnibus? It's something I've thought of, and I think I might actually do that in the future. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> but that is something I've seriously have thought about. 
Okay. Um. Uh, I'm. We're and now that we're we're still on the. Uh, we're still on the uh, publishing discussion for a while, and I have to ask. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure if you tried anything aside from uh, aside from Amazon, when it came to uh, when it came to seeking out publishers. But if you did, did you have any? Uh, preconceptions about how it would go, and were any of these preconceptions proven true or false? I I I I kind of did some research. I didn't really open any others. I just kind of did some research. I've noticed a lot of authors on Twitter said a Amazon pro Amazon publishing is by far the best tool to use. So I kind of just decided to use it, and I never stopped. Okay. I am trying now to decide whether or not that is, um, okay, not decide, assess whether or not that counts as peer pressure. <laughs> but I think it doesn't, or overall it doesn't. Uh, now I, I assume you've had, uh, I assume the uh, uh, the books or the stories you've uh, you've released have had uh, varying uh, varying degrees of success. Both, uh, you know, bo both from a sales standpoint and from a uh, critical reception standpoint, because yeah. you know, not, not not every story is your best. So I have to ask. As so I have to ask: uh, Was there anything about the reception of your stories that really uh, surprised you? There, was there was there ever a teachable moment, so to speak, from these experiences? I, honestly, I was more surprised people liked them. I remember when I did my first story, I'm like, okay, no one's gonna like this, but you're but I'm like, I'm just gonna put it up and just see whatever the hell happens. And then when when they said fifty people are right, I'm like, how on earth is fifty people reading my story right now? <laughs> I'd say my biggest successful story right now is the Royal Switcheroo. Okay. That is like that is a princess and then someone from the real world trading places implying princesses don't exist in the real world well this one is, is in fantasy land like i include like kings and queens and like a sane gnome something like that okay i don't know if that counts as isekai but uh i've i've <laughs> i've made a note of it um okay you mentioned that you started uh you mentioned that you started writing because you've uh, because you're taking care of your uh, stepdad at the time, so I want to know how many, how many other people, be it uh, friends or family, uh, are aware of the fact that you, uh, that you write and that you are, that, that you know, that you're a published writer and make money off of it. <laughs> first, um, I told my dad first off, and and my friends, and then I told my mom. So pretty much almost everyone knows that I write. And they're supportive of me. They're they're very supportive of me. They they're kind of like you just gotta go for it, go for it, and that's what I'm doing. <laughs> well, I'm uh, <laughs> uh, I'm glad that's the case. Now, is there uh, this this might sound like a weird question or like a repeat of a previous one, but is there anything you plan to do uh, differently moving forward when it comes uh, when it comes to how you uh, market or uh, discuss your writing. Hmm. I excuse me. Um, I kind, I kind during keep keep posting on Twitter. Keep like I promote it through Twitter. I let my friends know. Hey, I have this story coming out. Check it out. Like I have a friend group online, and then I have a friend group outside of online. And then they both support it and dive in. But I'm, I kind of want, ugh, I'm trying to open up more. I'm trying to let people know me a little more. I mean, I'm very shy. I've always been very shy. I've always been the quiet kid in the corner. So I'm trying to open up more. Okay. Now, and now we come to a, a spicy one. Of the, okay. Of the, of all the questions I uh, asked you so far, is there any you would want me to answer? Oh, 
<laughs> I like I like that question. Um, hmm. What made you get into writing? I I kind of I kind of always had a uh, a thing for it, an interest for it, but it's taken me but it's taken me like the first 20 24 25 years of my life to really come up with uh really come up with the seed of an idea of what it is that I actually uh, want to write and then it's taken me a bit longer to actually uh develop the premises and 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 then actually you know grow a pair and <laughs> and expand and uh, expand upon it put it on uh, put it down in a put it down in some form not not on paper but uh you know digitally yeah. and then I'll, and then and then even and even after i started writing it it took me it took a lot more uh, uh motivating so to say in order to actually start or also actually start promoting it and uh, getting in touch with the uh, getting in touch with people and making myself known so yeah that's the uh, that's the basic idea i've uh, i've i've always had uh, i've always had something to say but i was but it took me a while to figure out uh how it is that i want to say it i i i ugh. i completely get that i really do okay and uh, last but not least, the, uh, before we close off, is there any uh, link or platform you want to uh, you want to shout out? I'm gonna put all of your links in the uh, description anyway. But is there in case right. there's anything in particular you want people to know about? I um, I have a YouTube channel in which I cover award season. Um, okay. It's just my name, Mafia Anzalone. Okay. Check it out. And I, you I guys... assume you're I assume those uh, I assume you're not doing much this year or at this time of year. Um. Yeah, I I covered the Emmys briefly, but I don't know much about it. I mean, I watch a lot of TV. I've seen a lot of shows nominated, but I'm just kind of like yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have, and then I have my Twitter, which the link uh, Matthew Anzalone fourteen. Okay. Well, uh, that was a. Uh... Uh, that was it for my questions. I also got I also got to ask a little a little outside of those. So uh, thank you for your time, Matthew. It was uh, it was very nice to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, thank you to uh, thank you to all our viewers for their uh, for your attention. If you, uh, thank you if you enjoyed what you've uh, what you've seen, then uh, uh, go ahead and leave a like. Maybe even share this video wherever you think others will uh, like it as well. If you have anything you'd like to add to what has been said, the comment section awaits your input. And if you want to see when uh, my next video gets released, well then uh, please subscribe. Ideally also ring the bell or do whatever else uh, YouTube will ask of you in order to keep you notified. If you like Matthew, you can go ahead and uh, uh, you know subscribe to him as well. I'll link him in the, in the description down below. My, uh, uh, my debut novel, Heir to the Empire Next Generation, is available at most major book retailers under a massive link in the description down below. I'm also going to search out uh, Matthew's stuff and, uh, uh, and link it down below. And until next time, I am Jonathan Taylor, and this has been The Heir's Lair. <laughs>